soybeans get into the reproductive stages, you may be thinking about putting some additional fertilizer out there to try and get those yields to pop this year. New crop beans are worth quite a bit, right? They are, so you just wanna make sure you have good fertility out there. Now, I guess we wanted to talk today about late season soybean fertility, but let me start off by saying you can't do anything more in soybeans if you don't have a good start. So in other words, if you had poor drainage and if you had just a disaster with your stand and everything else, you know what, you might be able to save a little bit of that yield, but you gotta have a good start every season. So what I'm trying to tell you here is if it looks like right now you've got fairly decent yield potential, your stand looked pretty good, the year started off at least halfway is okay for you, then by all means we want you to be looking at this. Do some tissue sampling, maybe even do some soil sampling, even at this time of the year that's fine, but if you don't have good fertility for your soybeans, we know you're not going to raise a great crop. Well, one of the things that more farmers are doing this year than they have in the past is plant tissue analysis. We've been talking about it for years, how important that is to see exactly what nutrients your crop is taking up out of the soil, which ones it's short. Why not let the plant tell you that rather than trying to guess what's going on out in your field? Now, when we look at soybean plants, a lot of times early in the season, we're seeing high to even excessive levels of nutrients, but wow, does it change once they start flowering. Well, it can change, but I gotta be honest with you, I don't really believe in a lot of the results we get on the soybean plant tissue test. I don't think the tissue analysis that we have done in soybeans is nearly as important as what we have done in corn or wheat, because it seems like there, we see a lot more differences, we see where we're short, then we can put that fertilizer on and it seems like we get yield gain. But it's different, so it's different. Corn yield is determined yep early in the season. Right. Soybeans, really, it's right now that things are determined. Now, did you have good fertility, as you were mentioned? Did you have a good stand? All those things going into it, so you have the potential to put on Right, but that's kind of where I'm going with this thing. It's so late in the season by the time we actually figure out from tissue analysis, so it's August, and we realize, oh, I guess we were kind of short on potassium or phosphorus or whatever in soybeans. Well, by then it's too late to do anything. So it's really hard with this tissue analysis thing. What I would almost prefer in soybeans is to see you do some soil sampling if you don't have any soil testing results and figure out where you're at overall. And then also look a little bit at your history. I mean, for example, that last year you pulled 200 bushel corn off this. We know what you pulled out of the soil for nutrients. If you didn't at least replace that going into your soybean year, we know you're gonna be short for your soybean crop. So we see it all over the country where guys say, well, I think I put on enough for my corn so I not only had enough for that corn year but I have enough for the soybeans too but we're just not finding that that's true because the corn yields are so good. Well, you know, in some areas, let's say you're a little bit short in potassium and you're always worried about potassium, that's a big nutrient for your area that you need to add. Maybe you'll try some foliar products like Sure-K, for example, and put some potassium out this time of year. There've been some pretty good gains in potassium deficiency areas with putting on that added potassium, but you can't put out dry potash and expect those dry granules to break down in time for your soybean plant to get things moving. That's where a liquid like Sure-K comes in handy. Maybe it's micronutrients. I know on our farm, yep. micronutrients have been just a challenge for us all the time, especially in the rolling hills where there may have been some erosion over the last hundred years. Some of the micronutrients are very important and getting those into soybeans has shown some really good gains. We've even seen some five or 10 bushel gains on soybeans getting micronutrients out in those situations. Okay, so you can do some foliar feeding on your farm if you want to, or some side dressing late in soybeans. We're trying a number of different things out on our farm, but I will just tell you this, we've had more consistent results when we've done stuff in the fall or we've done stuff at planting time. With the foliar side, sometimes we get response, sometimes we don't. But again, if we've got our overall fertility way built up, we probably don't have the terrible deficiencies like you might see in some other fields. So you may be asking yourself after this discussion, well, have you found a product that just works all the time for you that you're using on lots of acres? And the answer for us is, well, no. You know, each field is a little different. The needs of that field with those soils are just a little bit different. So we're trying a few different products this year. We're trying AC97 on our farm. We're also trying Fertorain, the Sure-K that I talked about in some fields where potassium's been an issue. And TJ Micromix has been one that we've been using for a number of years. And when we put that in the right situation, it's been successful. Yep, but again, if I could go back in time with you, let's say eight months, 
and put some fertilizer out in the fall, especially P and K, do some stuff at planting time, maybe a little bit in furrow, including micronutrient product, that's what I would prefer to do. And I would tell you, you'll probably get more consistent results if you do that. Finally, the execution. How do you do this? Because I know a lot of guys don't want to make a trip just specially for fertilizer. What, they so... don't? I thought everybody loved to spray as many times as they could. Well, they aren't all like <laughs> you, Brian. Some of us have some other things to do besides just farm, but let's look at this. You know, you're, you may be spraying a fungicide right now. This is, as I mentioned earlier in the show, the right time to be out for so can white you tank mold, mix for example. These so yeah. can you tank mix these things? Yeah, so what can you mix with? Well, you have to be a little bit cautious because some of the products like, let's just say you're going out with a Flexstar GT right now. You've got some late season water hemp and you want to throw some fertility in. I would say absolutely not. You've already got one product that's a little bit warm on the plant. Why mix something else in that's going to just make it fire? Make two applications in that kind of situation. If you're going after late season water hemp with Reflex or Flexstar GT or something like that, make that as a separate application. However, let's say you're just spraying Roundup for weeds. Well then in that case, I don't think it's gonna be much of a problem because a lot of times with these foliars, we're talking about a quart or maybe a gallon. You know, it's pretty low rate stuff. Well, you need some nitrogen in there anyway or some fertilizer in there like ammonium sulfate with your Roundup. Maybe just replace the ammonium sulfate with what you're doing with your foliar fertilizer, something like that. Yep, so I'll give you a specific example. I had a question just the other day. It was Roundup TJ Micromix, so a, uh, a micronutrient product and fungicide. Do you want to put all three of those together in the tank? And I told the guy, probably not. Uh, if you want to do some, it's fine. Try it on 10, 20 acres and just see if you're okay with the leaf burn. It's not going to kill the crop. It's not going to even probably hurt the crop for yield. It might just help the crop for yield, but I just worry about that leaf burn, that cosmetic damage, and whether you like that or not. It's going to vary depending on weather conditions and a number of other things but I would try it on a few acres before I do a whole bunch. The other thing to say about the fertility, we've had a little better luck when we get a rain you know, within a day or two before or after we spray it. Then that plant is taking things in. It's actually uh, opening up the leaves a little bit to allow products to move through. If you're in an extreme drought, we just have not had any luck at all putting foliar nutrition on because that plant is shut down. It's trying to maintain its water that it has and it's not really letting things in in the leaves. It's the same thing with weed control. We can't get good weed control then either when we're in an extreme drought situation. Well, it may be important on your farm to get some late season fertilizer out for your soybean crop, but unfortunately that late season fertilizer is probably gonna help your Weed of the Week survive too. We'll talk about how to stop it on your farm coming up next.